Introducing streams. Streams are one of the most fundamental concepts in event-driven architecture. A stream in Kafka is the full history of events from the start of time. You can think of that as real-world events, business events, from the beginning of time until right now. Generally these represent the past right up to the present. As we go from today to tomorrow, new events are constantly being added. It's just forming up a history of the state of events. Messages in a stream are constantly arriving. They're always being added to the end of a topic. Messages in a stream are independent and they form a never-ending sequence of events. They arrive in a time-ordered manner in a stream and they do not have a relationship to one another. They can be processed independently. Let's think of some examples of what a stream could be. Website. Clicks on a website form a click stream. Orders arriving in a warehouse also represent a stream of business events. Twitter represents a stream of events in the real world. So what are we going to do? Is We're going to create a stream and represent it as comma delimited or CSV. We're going to create ourselves a topic called users. We're going to then create ourselves a stream using ksql db. And we're going to understand what it means to deal with consumer offsets. We're then going to see what it's like to build an aggregate on top of a stream. And we'll introduce the limit clause. It's worth pointing out that we will be initially using push queries. Push queries constantly query and constantly output the results. We'll be introducing the pull queries in a later lesson. Push queries continue to output results until one of two things happen. You're going to keep getting results until you either terminate the query or you hit a limit clause. The name push queries is a fairly new addition to ksql db. So push queries were always the default up to and including ksql 5.3. After 5.3, you have to describe that you want to use a push query by introducing the emit changes clause. Now this is required in ksql and ksql db 5.4 and onwards. Let me give you an example. In ksql 5.3, this is a way to write a push query. You just say select from a user stream and it was implied that that was a push query. However, in ksql 5.4 and later, you need to also include the clause emit changes. So these are equivalent. They're both representing push queries, but just notice that in 5.3 and earlier, you didn't say emit changes, and in 5.4 onwards, you need to include that emit changes. It's worth bearing that in mind if you're looking at some of the older code that you might see in these lessons and on the internet. So you'll remember from our last lesson that we had created a Kafka topic called users, and we had added some comma delimited de record data for records with two fields. Now we're going to create a stream around that Kafka topic. So firstly, at our ksql command prompt, we're just going to check that we have access to that topic. So we're going to use our favorite command, list topics. That's terrific. We still have access to that users topic. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a stream. Now a stream needs a name, so we're going to create a stream called the users stream. And we need to specify how to find the data. So the things that we need to do are create a stream, specify the data within the stream, and also specify the topic that underpins this data stream. So we use the syntax create stream, users stream, and then we describe what's within the stream. So we've got two fields, a name and a country code, and they're both var cars. And we also describe where we're going to find that data. And we have to specify the location of the underlying Kafka topic. So here we're using Kafka topic is users. And lastly, we need to specify how that data is encoded. Now we're using comma delimited in this case. So we're specifying that the value format is delimited. And in this case, delimited just simply means comma delimited. So create stream, user stream, we've specified how that data is organized, we've described where the data is using the Kafka topics, 
and we've just spe specified how it's delimited. Delimited means comma delimited. So we now have a stream called users stream. And when we use the, show, the list command, we can now say list me all of the streams available. And you'll see that I have a stream called users stream. So what are we going to do with this users stream? That's great. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is use the stream to interrogate the underlying data. Now, this is going to look very familiar to people who've used SQL in the past. We're going to write our first KSQL query against the user stream. So we're going to say select name and country code from the user stream. Hmm, that's a bit disappointing. We've specified a legal clause, we're using all the right fields, but it's just sitting there. We're not seeing any data. What could be going on? Well, if you remember what we learned before is by default, KSQL is only going to show us newly arriving data. So if we add a bit more data into our stream, maybe we'll add Ed from Great Britain, that will get written to the Kafka topic. And lo and behold, our KSQL query has returned that newly arriving data. Well, that's good. Let's just press Control C to exit out of that. Now we're going to introduce a really terrific setting that's available within KSQL, and that's the offset reset setting. This essentially determines where by default we're going to read from within the KSQL session. Essentially, by default, we've always been using the current offset, which means we've always been showing data from this moment in time going forwards. But we can change that default. And the way you change the default is to issue this command, set auto offset reset to be the earliest. And now every time we interact against the Kafka topics within this KSQL CLI session, we've changed the default behavior to always listen to the first records or the beginning of time. Now this setting will only have the scope of this session. So if I exit out of the KSQL prompt, and back to Unix and join back again, I might want to reset this command. But for all the sessions I uh, issue within KSQL for this time, I'm always going to now show the beginning of time. Now, the way to double check this is I can run that same query again. Select name country code from user stream. And this time, I've now got five records because what's happened is I've now gone back to the beginning of time and I get to see all of the data from the beginning of time. So that's pretty good, but let's just press Control C to get back to the command prompt. Now let's try issuing a very similar command, but this time I'm going to do a select from user stream, but I'm gonna add a limit. And you'll see that the limit has stopped me after four records. So I've got Alice, Bob, Carol, and Dan, but I've reached a limit after that, so I don't see Ed anymore. So the limit clause is a fantastic way of giving you a quick glance at the data without having to pull out all the data. Not a problem when you've only got five records, but if you've got 5,000 a second, it might become a bit troublesome. Now, this is a very SQL-like experience. And one of the first things that we might want to do against a, uh, a SQL set or a stream is to build a very, very basic aggregate. So an aggregate is a count or a group by. So we've already got a data set with users and country of origin. So what we can do is we can write ourselves a quick bit of aggregation to work out how many users we have from each country. So if we say select country code count star from user stream group by the country code, you'll see that we've got a subsection like this. We've got one user from Australia, two from the US and two from Great Britain. That's terrific. So this is a fantastic way of being able to slice and dice data resident in a Kafka topic very, very easily with an aggregate clause. So we've shown how to use a stream to look at some data, and we've done an aggregate clause to group up data within a stream. So when we've finished with a stream, perhaps we want to get rid of it. And it's very straightforward to drop a stream. And the syntax is, can you believe it, drop stream. Drop stream, if exists, allows you to uh, 
drop the stream and just drop it if it happens to be in existence. The delete topic clause also instructs ksql to drop the underlying Kafka topic. If we go back and say show streams, we'll see that our stream has disappeared. So we've cleaned up our environment quite nicely. And finally, we're just going to issue show topics and just check that our underlying topic has also disappeared. It has. That's terrific.